Hi, my name is Mike Frisch. I'm a psychology professor at, the, at Baylor University. With me today is Ed Diener, the world authority on happiness research. Dr. Diener, I want to ask you, what's the happiest place on earth? Well, let me first uh, say we've been studying the entire world and I've been working with the Gallup World Poll. We've now studied 155 countries in the world, so 99% of the world. We have studied the slums of Calcutta, we've studied the Inuit up above the north, you know, in the north pole, near the North Pole. Huh. We've studied uh, the Maasai in Africa, we've studied Amish, the people that live a simple life. And so we've looked across the world and we find some places are happier and some places are less happy. So let me start with Denmark. That's known to be one of the happier countries in the world. People say, well, why would Denmark be so happy? You know, it's kind of dark up there and so forth. Well, what we find a couple things in Denmark. First of all, people in the Danes trust each other. They say, if I lost my wallet, this is a question we ask in the Gallup mm -hmm. World Poll, would other people would return it? And in Denmark, they say, yeah, even a stranger would return it. Not just the police, not just my next door neighbor, but a stranger would return my wallet. Well, that kind of trust can be very helpful because that means when you go around society, you care about other people and you know they care about you if you get in trouble. So what's the ethnic diversity in Denmark? Is there, so is the there ethnic a lot diversity of... is very low. So okay. <laughs> uh, there are not many people other than Danes there and that uh -huh. may help them trust each other. So if you can achieve diversity in a society and still achieve that level of trust, uh -huh. then you've really accomplished a big thing. Well, it reminds uh, me of Einstein's uh, love of Buddhism because it was trying to the idea of universal brotherhood. I think some people have trouble get wrapping their head around that when you've That's got right. people who have very different skin color and culture. That's right. And so in some of the happiest countries, they're homogeneous, relatively so, in ethnicity, and that may help. Although a country like the United States, where we have enormous diversity mm -hmm. of, of ethnicity and lots of immigrants, we achieve a relatively high level of happiness despite all that diversity and despite the fact there's so many groups. So it is possible to trust other people even in a diverse society. Now one of the other things we know about Denmark though is that poor people there are relatively happy. So in some societies in the world there's great inequality and some people are extraordinarily poor and some people are extraordinarily rich. And we know that it's hard to be poor in such societies. It's just a struggle. Whereas in Denmark, we found that poor people actually are not that unhappy because they have a social safety net, they have health care and so forth. So now other countries that we study are, are, are happy, or Latin American countries are happier we find than we would expect them to be based on their income. Why are Latin American countries happy, like Costa Rica for example? Yes. Well, we think it has to do with the culture there. People are very supportive, uh, they're not competitive with each other all the time. Hmm. They uh, care about each other. They have big extended families that will support you when you get in trouble. Hmm. And so we know, and, and they do quite a bit of celebration. So they enjoy hmm. life. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've studied some small cultures like the Maasai. Mm -hmm. The Maasai are a herding people in Africa. They hunt lions, the traditional Maasai and wear these red, uh, beautiful gowns, hmm. robes, and we find that the Maasai are pretty happy. Why is that? Well, they're proud people, they think they're good people, mm -hmm. and they know how to deal with their environment. So they know how to get food in their environment, they mm -hmm. own cattle, their basic needs are met, they enjoy their social relationships, and they have high self-esteem. They think mm -hmm. well of themselves. They, have, they respect each other and they're respected and they're a happy people. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting people that uh, our son Robert has studied uh, in the slums of Calcutta told us, yeah, I'm a happy guy. And Robert said, how can you be a happy guy? You're making $2 a day. You can <laughs> barely afford enough money for your family wow. to eat. Uh -huh. And they live in a big pipe, a uh -huh. giant concrete pipe. That's Jeez. their house. And the man says, listen, when I, I'm a rickshaw driver and when I come home, I buy my kids a little piece of candy hmm. and they come running and saying, daddy, daddy. And they give me a big hug and then they look at me because they think I might have a piece of candy. And I pull it out <laughs> and they scream 
And when I see their reaction and I know that I can do something for my kids and how much they love me and how much I love them, that makes my life happy. So here we have one of the keys to happiness from a person in the poorest of circumstances and that is caring about other people, social relationships, people that you care about, and people that care mm. about you. And it's really a, a key to happiness. Well, um, our psychology Nobel laureate, economist uh, Daniel Kahneman has said that this Gallup World Poll is like the invention of the telescope, that somehow it's opened our eyes to the well-being of countries around the world. Is this something that we can uh, take a look at it at a regular basis? Is someone assessing this on a regular basis where we can compare the different countries in our own country and see our well-being wax or wane? Sure, so we're following uh, the world over time and we're now on the four, we followed the world in happiness in the countries of the world since 2005. So we now have 2005 to 2010, about a five year perspective. But at some point, we'll have a 15-year perspective, and we'll see what countries have gotten happier and what countries have gotten less happy. And the Gallup World Poll is the first time we have ever sampled all of humanity. So it's an amazing thing. Now, another thing we have in the United States uh, with Gallup is mm -hmm. a daily poll. We can I watch people's moods uh -huh. going up and down day to day. Hmm. So. We get a recession, people's moods go down. Unemployment is high, people's moods go down. Mm -hmm. Something good happens. We have uh, a holiday, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. Fourth of July, people's moods go up. And we can track people's moods over time, as well as in the world poll, tracking and comparing people across countries. And we see in the world, who's unhappy? Well, a couple groups of countries. One is places where there's just dire poverty where they just can't afford food. They tend to be less satisfied with their life. Although sometimes people in that can, uh, circumstance can sort of enjoy life anyway, but they're usually dissatisfied. Can you tell some of these countries what they would be, some of the poorest, yeah, so, so, or least so happy the, countries? Many of the poorest countries are in Africa, uh -huh. and some of the lowest uh, incomes in the world are in Africa. And we find when we ask them, have there been times in the past year when you've gone hungry? In some of those countries, three quarters or 80% of people say, yes, I've gone hungry. So this is dire poverty. How about the rule of law and political un unrest? So the, other th so the other thing that matters is the rule of law, democracy, political unrest, corruption. These kinds of social factors in a country where there's high corruption, that means you have to pay people off, nobody trusts anybody. Everybody's looking out for themselves and their own family. You gotta pay me, I gotta pay you. And nobody trusts anybody. Those kinds of places are not happy. They do not enjoy life. And a lot of those places are angry places where everybody hates everybody. And so we find certain countries in the world where the levels of depression and anger are very mm. high. You've also, uh, from my uh, limited understanding and some of your research, you found that Western countries have, are a little bit happier than some of the uh, less developed countries, uh, but they're but they but they're kind of stressed out. Is that an accurate portrayal? That's right. I think in some uh, very uh, wealthy countries, the United States, Australia, Korea, people are pretty happy. They enjoy life. Uh, they're not depressed. They're oftentimes not angry. So ang so many people are angry. But at the same time, they feel stressed. There's time urgency. There's not enough time. Both the man and the woman's working. Maybe their kids are involved in activities and they're constantly in a rush. They're under stress at work and so forth. Now, a little bit of stress can be okay. We call that use stress mm -hmm. or good stress. On and, and what we find is that, you know, feeling a little stressed occasionally can motivate you and so forth. But when you get high levels of stress and chronic stress, and, and, and say you have a child who's dying, that's stress that's not going to be good for you. It's going to be bad for your health. Really serious levels of stress are going to be bad for you. So what we're trying to do is separate out that little mild stress of being in a little bit of a rush and it doesn't seem to harm you from the really serious stress that can take a toll on your health and your happiness. So it, we look at these, you're saying there's a price to pay being in a more competitive culture. So Costa Rica has this wonderful, warm, fuzzy, great close relationships. 
but may, they may not be as ruthlessly competitive economically as we are, say, right. in the United States or Western countries. Right. So the so the most materialistic, competitive place where everybody's always socially comparing that tends to decrease happiness. People are not as happy as they should be given their income. So they may have high income, so the basic needs are met, they've got uh, affluence, but the problem is if you're constantly comparing yourself to others, I don't have enough money, no matter how much money you have, you always want more money, materialistic, and constantly trying to compete with other people and beat them. Mm -hmm. Now, we find that happy places are where you have your own standards mm -hmm. and you say, I don't want to be the better researcher or the better this or better that than the next person. I want to be really good at what I'm doing and develop my skills and I enjoy this work. And being really good at what you're doing, that's the kind of sort of positive way to uh, use your skills instead of trying to beat other people. So to be that impervious to these outside cultures, what? Are there things we can do or environments we can choose for ourselves? Do we need to turn off lives of the rich and famous or the television or cable, well, for example? I, I think developing your own internal standards, your own internal gyroscope. Who am I? What do I want? And realize this, you can win all the awards in the world, make all the money in the world, but ultimately enjoying what you're doing is going to be the source of your happiness. Because you know when you win an award or you make a lot of money or you buy a new car, it gives you a big kick and then it dies down. And after a week or two it's gone. And the thing that keeps coming back is using your skills, mastery, loving what you do. And that's the thing that can be ongoing over time and producing happiness. What about the countries of uh uh, Canada and Australia, they end up kind of high on these surveys, That's don't right. they? So why, know, why is that, you think? So we know Northern Europe is high in happiness. Canada and Australia, uh, the, what we call the Anglo countries, uh, the United States comes in right after that. The really interesting thing is that we have at the low end the, the very poor countries and the angry countries of some of the Middle Eastern countries. We find Palestine, for example, you won't be surprised. In Palestine, levels of happiness are very low, they're very angry and unhappy people. But then we find the people who are more unhappy or less unhappy than we'd think they'd be, like Latin America, mm -hmm. is happier than you would expect. And some of the Pacific Rim, places like Korea or Japan, are less happy than hmm. you'd expect. And we think it's because of this sort of strong materialism and competitiveness, hmm. instead of being socially supportive to other people. Yes. Well, as we look at uh, epistemologies or ways of learning about the world, there's something compelling about science and you've done some groundbreaking work in identifying different elements or types of happiness. Can you tell us more about the three yes. types you've identified? That's right. So we find that there's life satisfaction. Step back from your life, look at your entire life. Am I satisfied? Do I think I've lived a good life? Is my life close to my ideal? And we do find that things like money can influence that. But then we look at positive feelings, enjoying life, loving other people, and we find that, that money doesn't have much influence on enjoying life. What really matters here is using your skills and social relationships. They are so important for enjoying life. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is negativity, mm -hmm. anger, depression, anxiety. Sadness anxiety, and all of those detract from your happiness. And what causes those? Well, some part of it may be inborn, it may be genetic. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is some people have just developed a negative attitude in life and they've developed so many negative thinking habits over the years that all they do is see everything in a critical way. And they don't even realize that it's in their mind, not out there in the world. And that can make people more unhappy. Now, of course, dire circumstances, living in dire poverty or in a war zone, those can also create negativity. So we have these three different types of happiness and we know what causes each of those types of happiness is somewhat different. And those, uh, those of us interested can look at your work, look at the literature on well-being and positive psychology to learn more about these three types and even consider a career in science which seems to hit, have made you a very happy and productive person. Thank you. Thank you.